Hello, everyone, and welcome back to ShiftCast. We've got episode 24, and this time we have a special guest. Flitz is here with us today. Flitz, how are you feeling this afternoon? Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Of course, man. Jens, how are you feeling uh, this evening for you? I'm gonna yeah, go, it, is, gonna right. <laughs> it is uh, 10 p.m. at the moment, or a little bit past that. It was such a lovely day today. I couldn't yeah. really enjoy it because I had a lot of work to prepare for tomorrow, of course, for the Chip Summer League. edit some articles. We just published a big interview with Bluey. If you've been watching RLCS for, for a while, you might recognize that name. Played on PSG and FC Barcelona, but the latter he doesn't really have a lot of good words for. Understandable, because that organization that was not run very well. It wasn't run by FC Barca. It was run by an organization called Esportia or something, and they made a mess of it. So go read that. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a lovely day, and now it's a thunderstorm. So anything can happen here in Belgium. Nice. Thunderstorm. That'll be good for uh, good sleep weather. All right. Well, it's today... Hay fever, too. Oh, no. Um, today, we've got an exciting episode. Tomorrow begins the Shift Summer League. Obviously, we had play-ins and quals and whatnot last week. We're getting into league play starting tomorrow. And so we brought Flitz in. He qualified with his team. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, what I want to do is rewind a bit. And Flitz, um, let's talk about this RLCS season. So you've been kicking around for a while. When did you start... Um, when did you start seriously competing? Like, when did you put a team together for quals? You know, so the thing about my career that's very interesting, and I think about this sometimes, is my first two years of Rocket League, I was just a sub. I didn't start competing competitively till I was like mid-17 years old. And my first serious team was Angel and Kiri. And then we ended up making Gamers 8. And then it cut into, uh, right after that was like, I had like a very weird season. I had a bunch of teams kind of hopping around. Then I was on gaming for a little bit. And now we're chilling and incorrect. And I think so far, this has been my favorite team so far. Um, the org's been great, and it's been really nice to being with them. But, I mean, ha just talking about this last RLCS season, um, that first split was really nice with uh, Angel again and Tool. We got a ninth through 11th, and then, sadly, I got kicked, which was a little unfortunate. But we had a nice regain with Expert and Toasty. And I think with the cards we were dealt, kind of making a team in the middle of the season with everything kind of going on, uh, the fact that we were able to make the regional and just kind of show teams what we were made of, I, I was very happy with. For yeah. for this for the cards I was dealt, I was happy with the the season that I had. Um, right, I would say. So, you, you know, we talked about this a little bit beforehand, but we've got plenty of opinions rolling around about Carmen Court missing a major, Moist, uh, excuse me, miss, um, missing a regional, mm -hmm. Moist, missing a regional. Same with Rebellion, Dignitas over in NA, and so you know a lot of the focus with this format change from last season where we had, um, you know, 9 through 16 waiting on Sunday. We had the Swiss stage um, versus this format, which was totally wide open with all players on every team's, uh, on every team competing in a double ELIM format. So there's some, there's some different discussion about it, but I, I think one of the things that has not been talked about a whole lot is those teams that are, we'll say, like 9th through 24th mm -hmm. and what that impact on them was. So what do you think like uh, from your perspective what is the biggest difference from last season to this season is it a level a, 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 a level of consistency with quality um on sunday does it feel like it's kind of just a because from the outside it looks like it's almost it's almost just like a luck of the draw thing like yeah. if you end up in one of those lower brackets where a tsm falls down or an nrg falls down early or something you might just have a really tough go that day mm -hmm. and with only six events this season i'm curious what your take on that is as a player that's right there in that middle? So my take on this season, and this was kind of the story of my life this entire quals, was like, it's very dependent on your seed. And yeah. I hate to say luck, but it almost is a little luck-based, right? Sure. I think one of the best ways yeah. to go about quals is the Swiss format. I think with the way Swiss works, it really rewards the best of the best teams. Whereas double elim, it's like one series can go wrong and one series can go right. And just like that, you get a favorable matchup. One thing that I think is very insane to me is on the last qualifier of the season, we had to play Snowman first round um, in, in the upper bracket. We ended up getting that upset, which was a great win for us, right? Snowman got a top four earlier that split. We were able to get a 3-1 win over them. It was great. We played Cloud9 next, and then after we lost to Cloud9 on the qualifier match, we found out that, that were, there was a world that we played TSM because TSM lost as well. Yeah. The fact that we had to play Snowman, Cloud9, and TSM just to qualify – yeah. Um, it is, is insane to me. I don't think anyone that that's like a top eight, like right. Swiss in the regional type of type of mm -hmm. run. 
So the fact we had to do that even just to qualify was was kind of crazy to me. So the way I see it is I think the biggest problem for this 9 to 24 the, those teams is double elim is too unpredictable True. and it is very unforgiving. Mm-hmm. I think even K Corp missing out on that regional, they didn't lose to any bad teams by any True. means. They lost to regional level teams. I don't think they have it. I think if you have like a Swiss style format uh for quals instead of a double elim and yes, K Corp should be winning that, True. but I they would they would like the best of the best sixteen teams would be making it through Swiss. I think Swiss mm-hmm. is the best way to go about it. Whereas double Elam is a little bit volatile and it's very unforgiving. Yeah, yeah, and and you brought up a good point too. It's very very heavily dependent on seeding, and mm-hmm. we saw. I, I think the the thing that we kind of concluded is basically your one through sixteen. When in, and and I'm just I'm saying when the community looks at it and you rank you know, you're one through 16, Mm -hmm. those 16 teams have to be perfect until Sunday. Yeah. And if one of them is not perfect until Sunday, it's going to cause a wrench in, you know, one area of the bracket. Mm -hmm. And we saw that play out a few different times over the season. Well, Mm -hmm. that is very different from what we're looking at for shift summer league. You have run through a very difficult qualifier. We'll talk about who all you had to beat to get in here, but now that Mm -hmm. you're in, you're in Mm -hmm. for this full month. So what, um, you know, what is your take? There's been, we have had countless discussions about league play, open circuit format, hybrid, whatever. What is your feelings on that discussion? And what do you think might be the best path forward for Rocket League at the moment? I think, I think league play coming back, even if it's not for RLCS or something like this is a good thing. Um, People have been talking about it for a while. I never got the chance to compete in it because I didn't really start my career until the open circuit pretty much. So this is my first time really competing in a big league play. And I'll not, not only am I competing in a big league play, league play, I'm competing with the best in NA, right? Mm-hmm. Every single major NA team is in this um, is in this event. So I'm super grateful to, to even be here. Let me get that out of the way. Um, I think this will finally be a good chance to see, you know, what a sort of league play would look like in the RLCS. Yeah. I think even if... Uh, people don't agree that fun and incorrect are top 10 teams. I think for sure we have the top eight in North America. Um, and I think we're going to really see some high-level Rocket League coming up. Um, I'm just a little bit curious on what the public's going to think about it, just because it's been so long since we've had a sort of league-style uh, league style format. I'm just very happy that we have high-level teams in this. And you're playing them not just once, but twice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That is the Before one thing that the playoffs even. off. Because yeah. I'm not like... Like, I'm so used to, like, you know, like, watching back in the day, you know, you know, I was watching RCS as you would. Um, everyone plays each other once. You know, if you lose the best of five against a team maybe you should have beat, you get a second chance now, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and I think most importantly for someone like me, it gives me a lot more chances and a lot more reps, which is, you know, exactly what I'm looking for here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it is a lot to fit into three weeks of league play because mm-hmm. we have 15 matches a day mm-hmm. uh, per region, so 30. It's... <laughs> It's insane, but uh, it, it gives all the teams a lot of, yeah, a lot of practice, a lot of mm-hmm. experience just against all the teams. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing with the open era format is that you're going to have teams that should like be on kind of the same level, kind of meet each other sometimes, completely ignore each other because yeah, they're on yeah. other sides of the bracket and they're they're playing through Swiss in in the same kind of way. And they're just never actually meeting. Maybe you see them like twice a season go up against the other. And now we're seeing every team go up against the other twice in three weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One other question on that note. With the past three years or, or however long of RLCS with Open Era, you just can't really prep. You don't know what's coming. Mm-hmm. Now... Flitz, you're going to know who you play on Tuesday. You're going to know who you play on Wednesday. You're going to know what's happening. Does that change how you prepare as an individual or as a team versus what we've had in the past few years for RLCS? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think, like, that's the thing about a regional is, you know, at least before we had those eight invited teams. Um, but, I mean, heading into this, talking about this last season specifically, I mean, we saw yeah. teams like Shopify, K Court miss out. Um, so you didn't really know what you were going to get. Like, yeah, you could kind of plan it out. It's like, yeah, obviously G2 is going to make it. Genji is going to make it. But even still, we never really knew it was going to happen. Um, for this, obviously, we knew every team that was in it by the time uh, the qualifiers were done. Um, and now we have the, we have, you know, we have the schedule. Uh, we know who we're playing. We play uh, OG first, a team that I'm mildly familiar with. I played them a few times during the RLCS season. Uh, so now I got to move. Now I got to move ahead, moving forward. I know I have OG into SSG into Shopify. I kind of like I have everything's li- everything's lined out. You know, I know what to expect, which is a good thing. 
So uh, it definitely does change how you prepare for it, especially if you're one of those teams that kind of like preps and like there's a uh, there's like heavy replay and like oh they play like this so we got to play you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. but it definitely does change it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see you know post game interviews etc. Where players, it's it's almost 100 percent of the time we say we don't prepare for that team. We play our game. We play yeah. our way. If we do what we do, we'll win. Um, and I think there is definitely some truth to that with Rocket League. But I also yeah. think that it's kind of like a what other choice do they have, right? Like, you don't even know who you're going to run into. So you Mm -hmm. can't really focus on prepping for what's to come because you don't know who it is. So I'm excited to see because I think this will, you know, I don't think that this is going to change results and flip it on its head by any means, but I think that this definitely will benefit the teams that are willing to put in that prep work, um, lay down some groundwork before they get into the series that will, you know, be willing to, like you said, do a lot of replay analysis, see what the tendencies are of individual players, of the, the team and what the unit likes to try to accomplish when they get into offense, when they get into defense, mm. however they may behave in, in those scenarios. So I'm excited yeah. to see it. And then you mentioned too, like how is the community going to receive it? You know, I think mm. one of the things that we don't really talk about a whole lot, cause we focus a lot on the competitive side of it, but man, like imagine RLCS, but we know that this Saturday's matches are going to feature G2 versus Gen G. We know that this Saturday's matches are going to feature space station versus rebellion. And we know that those teams Winning is going to get them ahead in the race for the major or or whatever it might be, right? You can build a week's worth of content. I'm sitting here thinking as a streamer now. You can build a week's worth a week's worth of content because you know what's about to happen. You know, mm-hmm. we you know with these tournaments and and um, you know all happening on the weekend, you don't know who's going to match up. You don't know who's who's going to run into who. And so you know, I think that is going to be a really interesting thing from a, a fan perspective. Like you know, my favorite team is going to play this team and then this team. And so I think it's just going to be really exciting. Like you mentioned at the very beginning, it, it will kind of bring us back to the glory days of RLCS. Yeah, I think- for all the fans, it's going to be a very different experience. Yep. Of course, we have so many matches now that we aren't able to stream all of them on the yeah. Twitch channel if you're watching this live. Um, but I can give you a little leak Ooh. and tell you that Fitz, you are going to be featured this week on the stream Ooh. already. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey, there we go. Okay, I don't, I don't even know that. <laughs> so that's, oh, that's nobody knows I'm, that. That's that's that's, 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 that's a proper cool. league. That's cool. I like that. I like that's that. a proper league. But uh, yeah, so there are going to be a lot of team streams as well, so you can follow along with any of the teams anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a completely different way of watching Rocket League if you're going to be knowing the matchups yeah. beforehand. Yeah, definitely. Now we're talking about Shift Summer League. And we're going to get into some questions here. We're going to, uh, you know, look forward and make some predictions if we will. But first, Flitz, you qualified with a different squad than what you were playing with in the final regional. Mm-hmm. Toasty was absent for whatever reason. You guys yeah. had one to Mike slip, um, slide in, and you guys popped off. I mean, <laughs> this is, you know, I talked about, to your note, you said the community may say fun and incorrect are not on the same level, right? They may say mm-hmm. those things. But I, I took this approach. I looked at you guys run, all right? You lost a snowman in round one, and when you lose in round one, you know it's just going to be tough. You yeah. guys beat xCloud9, AmeriCanada, who finished the season, I think, making two of the final three regionals. Mm-hmm. Then you beat NRG, and then you beat Peeps. There is mm-hmm. no way that anyone can say you guys don't deserve it. You ran mm-hmm. through you know, two or three of the expected teams to qualify. Mm-hmm. That's a proper run. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, quals were, were very interesting. First off, I want to say is uh, Toasty was on vacation with okay. his brother Moses. Oh, uh, <laughs> they, they, went to, they went to Canada. So, so uh, you know, I was, you, like, I, I was like, to, <laughs> so I was like, expert, bro, our teammates in Canada, we got to do something. And we're like, let's just get one to Mike. He's doing well in six minutes. Let's pick him up. Um, I didn't really know what I expected heading into this qualifier. I'll be, I'll be straight with you. I, I honestly weren't sure if we were going to make it or not. I was like out there. I was like, this isn't my team. Wanda's good. Expert's my dog. I think it's three really good players. I don't see yeah. why we couldn't make it, but to, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, I knew it was going to happen. I didn't, right? Uh, we get reverse swept by Snowman, which was really painful. That was mm. a really, really painful loss. And it took me a few games to lock in um, against Cloud9. For the first like one or two, I was still kind of like out of it. Um, but once we clicked and got that win in game five against that X Cloud Nine roster, I'm pretty sure every series from there was a 3-0 or a 3-1. We kind of just like moved through. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just once that happened, we just got that momentum. We got past Netherland uh, America. I hit like the nicest redirect that I've ever hit in any oh, tournament. Okay. I, hit, I hit this like 
skim in like a five minute OT to like go top right. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, was kind of nice. That was a beauty. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I probably won't do that again, but it was a nice shot. So that, I, I wish you could pull it up right now, but it is featured <laughs> on, on the on the Twitter, of course. Hey, maybe I'll maybe I'll hit it when I'm on the shift stream tomorrow. Oh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then NRG was we lost to them in the regional. Um, mm-hmm. That was actually who sent us out of the season. Um, and and I felt bad because Toasty, that was the team that kicked them, right? Right, right. So we really wanted to beat them in the regional. We weren't able to, but we were able to get the revenge here. But it was a different roster, right? They didn't have Mist, and then we beat Mist the next round. So we got we got the full circle. <laughs> we got the revenge for Toasty. We made it into the league, and it, it was it was a really good feeling. It's it's just like, you know, you you work so hard mm-hmm. to make these regionals, and you know sometimes it like even 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 when you make the regionals, it feels great, and then sometimes you'll like not do as well, sure. um, and you'll you'll be done in a week, right? Uh, not even a week. You'll be done in a weekend. Um, but we we worked hard. We made this we made this league. And at the very least, we have three weeks of high-level competitive Rocket League ahead of us. And I think that's really reassuring. Even if we do really bad on this first day, maybe even do bad on the second day, we'll still have 12 games, yeah. plenty of scrims, that's right. plenty of matches. And I'm really excited uh, heading forward. It's awesome to hear. And I think, you know, Yins will probably uh, confirm this, but I think that is what they wanted to provide. They wanted to provide yeah. a space for a community to enjoy um, some, some high-level Rocket League, but also for the players to stay sharp for Worlds, for some, uh, you know, maybe teams that are already looking at tryouts and, and, and looking at other things. So, um, well, yeah, you know, there there is this gap, right, yeah, between yeah. after after the second major, and I mean, the second major already is part of that gap for players who didn't make it there, and then all the way through the season, like there's still the world championships somewhere yep. later this summer, I guess. You know, it, it it feels so long that it it's great to be able to fill up some of that space. Yeah. Mm. So. We uh, got this from you earlier, but Wanda Mike was a stand-in, so Toasty's mm-hmm. gonna be back. But now you've got another player gone for week one, so you kind of are effectively running a four-man roster. Yeah, the conclusion it's, is it's it's insane. So <laughs> Toasty was on vacation for qualifiers. Expert yep. is on vacation for week one. Um, <laughs> so week one will be. I mean, it is the make... summer, so. Yeah, I no, I mean, I get it, and it's 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 a little awkward. We're doing our best. I will say, um, for being the listed sub on the roster, I think Toasty is the best sub we could have had. Um, <laughs> like, he, you know, obviously we all have experience playing with him. Me and Expert. Um, I think he's really easy to play around, so I think Wanda's not going to have any trouble there. Yeah. It's going to be really weird, though, because it, it, it really does feel like a four-man roster. It's just like yeah. so many different variations that we're going to be playing with with uh, with these groups of players. But for our situation, I'm still very confident. Oh, yeah. um, I, I honestly think even if I'm not in that mix of this four, like I think any three of us are, are a very high-level team. And I think obviously me, Expert, and Toasty have showed it. Me, Wanda, and Expert have showed it now. Um, so hopefully me, Wanda, and Toasty can show it uh, Monday, or Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's, that's kind of right. what I'm hoping for it. All right, well, let's do this. Um, we're going to jump into Shift Summer League Preview. We've got a few questions, and then we're going to let Flitz get up out of here. Uh, so first off, and each of us will give you our answer. Yen's I and, and Flitz will all answer these. Mm-hmm. First question we've got, which team from the play-in surprised you the most? Not the, excuse me, not the invited teams, of course. We haven't seen him play just yet, but from the play-in, who surprised you the most? Obviously, in a positive way. <laughs> We don't want to in a good way. Call, call out anything good. bombing yeah. out. Uh, by the way, this can be NA or EU, right? Uh, am, am I, am, entire... Who's going first? Who's going first? Am I going first? You go first. You go first. All right. Can I say us? Am I Absolutely. allowed to say incorrect? Because I, I'm, not, I'm not going to lie, man. Like I, I kind of said this like when I first got on here. I wasn't sure if we were going to make it. I'm going to be honest. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't think that many people had us going into this. Um, yeah. We made a really good run. I'd say we beat four teams people didn't expect us to beat. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like. True, truthfully, and even even still, we were right there with Snowman too. I, I think yeah. that would have been a great way to start us off with an upset. But uh, I don't know. After we lost, I mean, people already had us counted out. After we lost to Snowman, I almost had us counted out for like a game or two. I was I was just not having it. Yeah. But you know, my team helped me pick me up. Uh, we all got the groove, and then all three of us started playing very well. And uh, I mean, I know we surprised people, and I kind of surprised myself. So I'm I'm glad to say <laughs> incorrect. You know, I feel you. I feel you. I'm right there with you. I also picked you guys. Mm. Because n- no offense, right? No, no offense. It's, it's but fine. you did it. You did it with Wonder Mike. Yeah. No offense to Wonder Mike, but you did it with Wonder Mike. Mm. I mean, that's people, that's people something I wasn't Wanda. expecting. He, he, people haven't seen him in a minute, but Wanda's still that's right. That's I can true. I can personally vouch that was not a fluke or nothing. Uh, Wanda's okay. Wanda's still hear. Wanda's still a high level a high level RL player, and we're gonna. That's great to hear. I mean, it, it it I mean it only strengthens my confidence in your yeah. team as a whole, right? That yeah. you can do it with. A four-man roster, basically, mm-hmm. right? So, mm-hmm. 
of course, the, it's going to be a tough competition. Um, I feel like a lot of people are looking at NA as this like way better competition right now because all of the world's teams are, are playing as well. Uh, but that does mean that you're going to see some matchups that are maybe a little bit uneven. Mm. Whereas in EU, people are bashing it for the world's teams not being in there. Respectfully, like, yeah, fair enough. Mm. But it does mean that you're going to have a lot more kind of equal matchups. That might not be the case with every North American matchup. So it, yeah. it's going to be a tough run, I'm, I'm sure, for you guys. You know, yeah. you've made it through playoffs. Congrats. Thank you. And now you're going to come up against those invited teams. It's going to be going to be tough. But yeah, you really surprised me in such a positive way. My selection for the surprise was Team Fun, which is Talk, Nitrous, and T. Carell. And, you know, I think a, a piece of that is uh, T. Carell has been playing for a while. Uh, Nitrous has been playing for a while. They've had some ups and downs. Um, Talk is a newer player that I think is having a lot of success recently. But the reason that I was so surprised is they just ran straight through. Yeah. Um, I mean, they beat j Pal, Oath, and Adam. And then they turn around and beat Peeps to qualify. They went through in the upper side. So... That's crazy. Uh, you know, a very impressive run there. Talk has also just recently teamed up with JNAPS in a Canadian event. And it, um, I think it's a 3v3 event. I'm not 100% yeah, sure, sure. But mm -hmm. they won that as well. And so he's been he's been rocking and rolling. I'm excited to see him play in that 3v3 environment against that highest level of competition that we keep uh, keep referring to. So we got fun and incorrect across the board here for us, um, which I think would probably be the most common choices. Yeah. Those two teams definitely popped off. Let's jump to our next one. Which team from the play-in do you think has the best chance of making a deep run in the tournament, making playoffs, making some waves? Uh, um, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell you yeah, what. I'll go sorry. first this time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump over to EU. Uh, my selection is actually Espartaco, and I actually did not. I didn't. I didn't predict them to make it in. I thought. Uh, I thought some other teams would, but I, I think they had a pretty good play-in run. They lost to Swadad. I may not be saying that right, but Swadad beat everybody 3-0. Sudan. They just yeah. just destroyed. So I think, you know, when you have those days, it's obviously a confidence building day. But sometimes, and I'm sure we've all done it, no matter what rank you are, you just have those pop off days where where nothing goes wrong. You win everything. Every bounce goes your way. But as Spartaco, after their loss, uh, they fell down and they beat Belly Goal and they beat Fast Forward. And both of those teams were regularly uh, nine through eleven or twelve through fourteen in in nearly every regional. And so that is a good quality, consistent um, opponent there. So I like those two wins. I think it's Spartaco with Stizzy playing on that roster, dying, and Dorito. I think that's going to be a good shout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Spartaco is also an interesting team because it's fully Spanish. Mm -hmm. You have so many Spanish players in the European League. It's crazy. Like 10 out of the 30 players are Spanish. One wow. third is... It's basically oh, wow. the Spanish League at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a couple of teams that have two Spaniards and one German on them. That seems to be a very popular combination. But Aspartico is the only completely Spanish roster. Um, but I had 100% because they also had to beat fast forwards to qualify, yeah. I think, in the upper bracket, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. I I wasn't sure if they were go going to be there. And, and they absolutely did. And they have uh, Chris P, who is going to move over to NA mm -hmm. soon. After this, he's already kind of left his roster. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of his last hurrah in Europe for, for a while. Tour. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, yeah, farewell tour. So I'm, I'm really curious to see what they can do with that. But uh, yeah. Blitz, what are you thinking? I'm going back to NA for this one. Yeah. And I think this Dignitas roster with Zanil mm. has a lot of potential, man. Okay. I think Evo is one of the best players in NA. I think he's top 10. I think he's super mechanical. He's super flashy. And I think Zanil was, I think him getting removed off cloud nine was a shock to everyone. I think he was yeah. their best player. And I think him being the second option on this dig team with Arsenal being an incredible third option, just like that whole roster to me, it fits, right? Yeah. They go through quals. I feel like they do a pretty good job in quals. And I think overall, both all three of those players have just been impressing me around the board of my ranked games and my six mans. And now that they're all together, I'm very curious to see how far Dig can go because I think they can do some damage. I love it. Uh, which matchup are you most excited to watch for the league play stage? Jens, why don't you kick us off this time? I have two teams you might not expect as my favorite matchup. That is Grid Serve Resolve versus mm -hmm. Fake German Amigos. You know why? Why? Because it's Ivan versus Ivan. <laughs> the match of the century. <laughs> We've got Ivan, 
right? Who has been a, a very solid, solid uh, talent in EU for a while now. Yep. Versus Ivan, mm -hmm. who I don't think a lot of people have heard of yet. No, I haven't. It's a complete Not unknown player coming Another in. Spanish player, right? Another Spanish player. Yep. yep. This is the Ivan with an A. The other Ivan has no uh, second vowel. <laughs> So it's going to be Ivan versus Ivan, and I want to see Ivan come out on top. I'm sure they will. Uh, it's going to be hard to beat Ivan, but, but I, I think, think Ivan, Ivan can, can do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blitz, give us your I'm thoughts do, on exciting I'm a, matchup. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one in sure. the U and one in an A. The okay, first okay. one I'm going to say is I'm going to go Jobless versus Oxygen. Okay. I think, I think Nass is such a good player. I'm oh, yeah. really happy to see him on a roster for this. And Oxygen's obviously probably the best team, I'd say, in Europe in this league. Um, so I think that one, for me, is... I just think that's going to be like a, you know, almost a bloodbath. I think there's going to be goals and goals and goals. I think it's going to be good, right? Yeah. And then the second one is a little biased, but I want to play Poab again. Because for those who don't know, Poab reverse swept us in Regional <laughs> 2, and we didn't make the Regional because of it. And I want my revenge, man. I want to get back. <laughs> I want to beat him twice. I'm going 2-0 against Moyes. You heard it here first. I love it. I, I love I, it. I, I, want, I, want my, I want my revenge, man. There we go. Revenge. Flitz revenge tour throughout Shift uh, <laughs> Summer League. Um, mine is Oxygen versus Luna Galaxy Complexity. Of course it is. Of course. I mean, look, I've got to say Oxygen. How am I not? How, how is that not the team that I'm most excited to watch, obviously? Yeah. Uh, but then Luna Galaxy Complexity, I think, is going to be a fun one. I'm, I mean, I'm excited to see that team play anybody. Um, you know, pulling a Chronic out for whatever reason. I don't know if he's unavailable or whatever. Is uh, an interesting so, yeah. choice. I think he is a, a phenomenal talent. But they've got CRR, who is... Uh, another phenomenal talent. So I think he's going to slot in well. I think he and Atomic have uh, plenty of experience playing together. Maybe not uh, on teams, but I know they've run some twos, played some uh, some some tournaments, some smaller tournaments together. So uh, I'm excited to see those guys play. Next up, we've got... Um, we want to select a player that we think their stock has risen the most uh, throughout this qualifier and play in. Who do we think has kind of proven themselves or maybe started to make a name for themselves amongst the community? I mean, is there any other answer? I mean, it's talk. It's talk. You know, I mean, I, I was going to go talk as well. I had a, I had a second <laughs> one just, I had a second one prepared, but I mean, if we're all going talk. I'm, Who, you know, who's your other one? It is well, I was, was going to say, I think a lot of people kind of just forgot that one of Mike's a good player. Yeah. Like, oh, it's I a little biased. He's my I did. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to say, I, I did. I, I forgot know, he was I mean, a good player. Like, like, no disrespect. It's just like a lot of people just kind of forgot because he also did, he did take a break for a little bit. Yeah. But a lot of people forgot how good he is. And I think he's going to, even if we don't do great, I think one of Mike's going to have uh, a, a good league play. And he's going to show people why he's still yeah. a top level player in Rocket League. But I do think talk is a little bit more than Wanda. Sure. No, dis to, no dis to Wanda. I, right. I think talk's just like such a safe pick. But he he is the right answer here. Well, I mean, when you look at the framing of the question, talk stock was essentially non-existent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from the Very community good. perspective, right? Mainstream mm -hmm. viewers, we probably aren't a no, you know, we didn't know much about him. Mm -hmm. And I saw this great Twitch chat the other day. But now he's the talk of the town. Oh, oh. Wow! Wow! That's... <laughs> you really did it. Huh? You really did. Come on. <laughs> No, I, I think as well, I mean, uh, it might be because he's Nova Scotian, but getting the JNAPS vouched and getting right. a JNAPS tweet in general, oh, yeah, that dude never yeah. tweets. You, you have to yeah. do something special to get that. I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. So. Yep. So Talk yeah, is definitely, already... uh, definitely one of those players that um, yeah. is, is on the up and up, if you will. Now, this is uh, a question that you may have. I don't, you, Flitz, you may not have the list on the top of your head here, but we've mm -hmm. got um, Shift Next Up player list. And so we've got plenty of next up candidates in uh, Shift Summer League. And so we're going to select who our player that we are most excited to watch. I mean, yeah, we can, we can name the list of the of the next up players in the Shift Summer League. Is That's this... Tecos. That right. is Rizfox. That is Talk. And uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry. Matzer? Matzer? Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Mitzer, French, French guy. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll just keep it rolling. I'm, I'm going to talk. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited to see it because I haven't seen much of, I haven't seen much of him. And, and to, to the point that Flitz just made, if Jane has, if Jane has just tweeting about it and giving him the stamp of approval, I, I am interested. I am intrigued. Yeah. I want to see what does he bring to the table. Um, he's, he's got a couple of good teammates there with T Corel and, and Nitrous. Um, but I think at the same time, like those are, those are guys that never really pushed past a top ten, top eight area. Yeah. And so if, you know, if they add talk to the equation, 
and now they're consistently competing with top eight, that indicates to me that he's the real deal. So I'm excited to see how they hold up here in the shifts. Yeah. League. Nitrous is now called Sander, right? Yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to go talk again. Do you want to go talk again? I'm, I got I got a different pick, actually. Okay. I'm, going, I'm going different. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, I, I, I didn't know what to choose. I didn't know whether to go for the Belgian or for, or for the French guy, but they're both Francophone. They both speak French. Mm -hmm. Enough. It's Rice Fox and Matzer, and they're playing on the same team, okay. so that, so, and, and they're the only Francophone representatives in EU, so they're going to have to do it. They're going to have to show it now. Mm. This is their chance to actually prove, you know, that there is more to France than the upper echelon of <laughs> European Rock League. I mean, we haven't seen that much new talent from France That's recently. True. I mean, yeah. th these two players are, are very good examples of it, but they're kind of the only ones at the moment um whereas in na it's just been exploding all over the place with you know 15 16 year olds coming up on, on new teams there's so many teams that i wouldn't even call them bubble teams anymore they're proper rcs yep. teams now yep. so i want to see the next generation of francophone talent stepping up so i'm gonna go matzer uh, guys folks i think we've already seen a little bit more of in the in the past rcs season um of course he might not have had the teammates to really do it but um, <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm excited still for those guys. Look, now, hear, now hear me out, right? Okay. I would have gone talk. I would have. Okay. But I'm playing him, right? I'm playing yeah. him twice, and I'm also going to be playing while he's playing, so I'm not really going to be able to watch him. You know yeah. what I mean? But I've been a Tech House fan for a while. I, okay. I like Tech House. I like his game. He had some good moments in RLCS. Mm -hmm. he, made the, he made the shift summer league. I'm pretty excited to see what he can do, man. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. I first met him. I played a tournament where it was uh, – I played with a Mexican player, I played with a European player, and I was an NA player. It was hosted by a bunch of, like, Hispanic creators. And that was the first time I played with Tech House. And I was very impressed with how good he was on NA ping. And then he continued to impress me as he did things in RLCS. He was getting upsets. And I've just been a fan of his for a while. So I'm excited to see what he can do in the summer league. He is. He reminds me of you, you know? Does he? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can you, see that a little bit. You like, both just come out with these crazy shots once in a while. And then <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> all over Twitter again. Uh, yeah, fair, fair yeah. enough. I, I, I can, I can get behind that. But I'm a Tech House fan, so I'm excited. Well, to he, him. he was the KC killer, the KC Slayer yeah, this season. So, so that's quite the, um, quite the accomplishment. All right, final question. We're gonna let Flitz get up out of here. Which teams in each region do you think will finish first overall in league play? I'm going Oxygen and G2. Okay. Uh, for me, I, you know, G2 is just you kind of have to go G2, right? Yeah, they're, you they're best. To. They're one of the best teams, if not in the world, uh, but definitely the best in the night. So I'm gonna go G2. And then for EU. I'm going with my boy Nas. Let's go jobless, man. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a Nas oh, fan. I'm a Nas fan, dude. I do have oxygen as well. Okay. But I'm gonna predict the upset in NA, and I'm gonna say Gen G okay. are taking this one because okay. I feel like G2 have won too much. You know. I, I agree. <laughs> they agree, they've but... won too much. No, Look, no, no. But I, seriously, I think there might be... and then they keep winning. So yeah, it's true. Now, it's hold true. On. But there might be something to it, you know, where they've mm -hmm. kind of lost their edge. They've they've won it now. And they're treating this as a, like a nice summer summer league, which it is fair enough to them. But maybe Gen G can get them back here. Okay. After all the French dominance and European dominance over years, G two gets one major win, and Yin says that's too much. <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> fair enough, man. Fair enough. Come on. No, hey. On a real note, super excited for Shift Summer League. Um, it's going to be so much fun. I think like we talked about earlier, I think it will be the, the, the eSport has grown tremendously since the open era began. Yeah. There are so many people that are, uh, you know, eSports fan, Rocket League eSports fans that have never seen league play. And so to get a little taste of it here through Shift Summer League, to have these matches determined beforehand, you already know. And, and you know, the way that this works is, look, when we get halfway through our matches, there's going to be implications. Like you're going to know if incorrect upsets Space Station here, Space Station's going to be knocked out of playoffs. They're not going to be able to do it, right? So there's going to be implications as we get closer to the end of the season. It's going to be fun to watch. You guys make sure you stay tuned in. Follow the Shift Arley Twitch channel if you're watching live right now. If you catch this on YouTube, head over to Twitch. Again, Shift RLE is what you're looking for. Flitz, thank you so much for joining us. The floor is yours. If you want to do any shout-outs for anyone, plug any socials, anything like that. I'll keep it. I'll keep it real quick for you guys. All right. Check out my Twitter. Same ad as my below. Check out my YouTube, all that good stuff. But most importantly, check out the shift summer league. Go support incorrect. We're facing off against OG. I don't know which of our games is on stream, but we'll be on stream tomorrow.
But we're facing off against OG. Be there to support us. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, take care. Legend. All right, let's jump back into it. No, you guys did not hear us talking when we were supposed to be muted. You did not hear that. That did not happen. That's live, baby. <laughs> That's live. Hey, we're still working on it. This is week two of the live stuff. Uh, again, if you're catching on YouTube, we are doing these live now on Twitch. If you want to stop in, shift RLE on Twitch. Uh, big shout out there. Thank you for the raid. Yas, we appreciate that. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's keep it rolling. We talked with Flitz, got his perspective towards it. I'm excited to see him compete. One of the things that I love is when players are honest, humble, and grateful. And he's all those things. You know, he's honest about the fact that he he said, look, I'm not going to pretend that I knew we would make it. He knew that it was an uphill battle. And he was I, I respect that he was, uh, you know, honest about that reverse sweep and how it impacted him, right? He said he was pretty frustrated oh, yeah. as they fell to the lower side, which I think is, like, very fair. I'm sure all of us would uh, be frustrated with uh, getting reverse swept, so... Big shout out to yeah, and, he, and he's in a position where he can get players like one of Mike to play on his team. Yep. Um, so that's a pretty good position. And uh, but it's it can be it can be scary, you know. Oh yeah. Because there's always teams trying to beat you. And we've talked about it so many times before that in NA you have this whole range of teams, this whole slew of organizations and and unsigned teams as well that can just beat each other. So because they're kind of on the same level, even yeah. like down to the Top 12, top 16, I don't know. So, yeah. Shout out to Flitz. Again, making some time for us today. But let's jump into marquee matchups for week one. We'll start over here on the EU side. First up, we've got Oxygen versus Resolve. And that is going to be at 8 p.m. Central European. Is that standard or summertime? It's summertime, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's, it's all in summertime. So... Wait, 8 p.m.? Yeah, that's the second round then, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's 7 p.m., 8 p.m., and 9 p.m. Uh, for both regions in CEST, so Central European Central uh, Summertime, as well as in NA, 7, 8, and 9 EDT. So Eastern Daylight Time, I think? Oh, I think. Something like that. I always just say ET. Yeah. Yeah, because I I never I I can't ever keep it straight. I don't ever know what's what. Well, I always have to look it up, and then online it says EDT, so I'm I'm used to saying EDT as yeah. well. Uh, okay, but uh, yeah, Oxygen versus Resolve. I mean, I think those are, are are two very solid squads. Two of the I mean, I would say probably top four at least expected uh, squads. I mean, if Oxygen has remained in form. I think they should take that. But we know that both of those teams, um, I mean, their season is over, right? They're not going to Worlds. And so I think it, is, um, it would be unsurprising if they had taken some time away and tried to kind of wind down from the RLCS season. So I think anything could happen. Uh, just like you were mentioning there for the NA side, a lot of people have looked at this European uh, the, the participants, and they, like you said earlier, they kind of brushed it aside as like, uh, it's not all that competitive. You know, Oxygen or Luna Galaxy is going to win it. And, and I think they're I think they're kind of underestimating teams. And listen, I would love for Oxygen to sweep through everything and have no problems, but I just don't think that's... Of course you would. I don't think that's how things are going to unfold. I think these are very solid teams that are competing in this, and it's not just two or three. You know, I think all 10 um, have the ability to beat one another. I mean, let's be honest. Oxygen should still beat... Sure. The, the vast majority of these teams. Sure. But everyone knows that. And now everyone can actually prep for mm -hmm. for that as well, right? Because you all these teams know exactly when they're going to be playing against Oxygen. So they can be ready the moment they need to be playing Oski, Joyo, and Archie. So, yeah, it's going to be tough for Oxygen even. Oh, yeah. And like I, I said earlier... You you're gonna have more teams because you're missing some of the some of the top French teams uh, in Europe. You're gonna have more teams that are yeah. somewhat on the same level yep. and that can compete very well against each other. So you might say there's lacking some some of the top tier, but there there will not be any lack of competitiveness between yeah. these teams. Yeah. 
Uh, we've also got, and, and do you know, Yins, off the top of your head, are these, uh, I mean, these have got to be on multiple nights. Like, are the first two for night one, and then the second, or, or that third um, match is... I have it right here. <clears throat> What's the, the next one? We have the other spotlight match is JJ Rocks. Is that how you pronounce it? I mean, it's a Spanish Hello. work, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some Spanish pronunciation. Versus Luna Complexity, Luna Galaxy X Complexity, uh, which is on... Day one as well. It's also okay. on the on the Tuesday. So you've got your Oxygen Resolve match happening at 8 p.m. CEST, which is the second round. And you have JJ Rocks versus Luna Galaxy uh, and Complexity at 9 p.m. Central Eastern, uh, Central European. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be so... CEST. CEST. Yeah, yeah. CEST. So yeah. night one already out the gate. We've got some banger matchups. Um I mean, I mean, this is going to be so much fun. Uh, I don't know if you guys are excited about this. I, I am really excited. I have always been an advocate for the open circuit because I think it, it – I, I like the fact that we tear down barriers and allow any player that's good enough to surge forward. But there is um, – you know, th there is something special about league play, knowing what matches are coming up. You can see, um, like I mentioned earlier, like, you know, if, if Oxygen starts off 3-0, and um, you know, they they – know that the rest of their 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 path is is fairly you know fairly simple straightforward but if you've got a team that starts one and two now they've got the pressure on and this is just you know it's just something different from what we've been seeing on a consistent basis with uh weekend tournaments so yeah it's just different i mean there's mm -hmm. pros and cons and by no means do i think that rlcs should go back to league play sure i actually i don't think so it's a very different format with yeah. plenty of drawbacks as well Especially, you know, how much it can hold back new talent coming in. Yeah. That's a major point of it. Um, but, I mean, it is nice to once in a while be able to see these kind of matchups and look forward to them uh, the way we do right now because we have another uh, match in round two on Tuesday, on the first match day, which is Jobless versus fake German Amigos, mm. uh, which were... F Shortly signed up as Sir, but then quickly changed their name. Um, okay, interesting. I mean, they're, they're kind of the same, yeah, kind of players, right? They're they're fake German amigos because there's not there's not really that much of the the old German amigos squad left right. from it. Um, but it's uh, against Jobless, yeah. Uh, that's another match, and in the second round, so eight p.m. or seven if you live in uh, Bridges Isles or Portugal. So. There's all these matches already just on the first day, and this doesn't even include the matchup that I'm looking forward to, just Ivan versus Ivan. Because <laughs> that's the first round as well, first round on Tuesday. Resolve wow. versus the uh, fake German Amigos. That's gonna I be really awesome. want to see Ivan leave. Uh, Ivan win that matchup and, and really get a lead in, into the next. Because that's, I mean, Ivan can do that, you know? I'm I'm certain that Ivan will do that. Yeah, 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 I am too. Yeah, it's always lovely to see this in in Counter Strike where you have Alex versus Alex. Mm -hmm. There's also a Spanish player involved there. Why I, do they, the Spanish players always have the same? My uh, my two v two tournament this past weekend had Team Eris A R I S and E R I S. Mm -hmm. That was the two players. Lovely, lovely. Eris and Eris. Yeah. Uh, well, let's jump over to some of our marquee matchups for uh, NA. We've got uh, G2 Stride taking on Shopify Rebellion, and that is day one, round one. Um, I mean, that, that's going to be exciting. I know, personally, I was a little bit sad, uh, disappointed in the Rebellion season. I thought that I had high hopes for that squad. I think they've, and I still think, they've got plenty of mechanical talent uh, on the roster. Um, I think that was evident by their incredibly high-powered offense throughout the season, uh, but they just struggled to pull it all together with the defense and and getting the victories that they needed. Um, and then, of course, obviously missing that regional um, through, and, and then followed up by I think a fifteenth, sixteenth place uh, yeah. in the next one it was just such a such a damper on their season that uh, you know it's hard to regain after that. But I still think that is a talented squad. I think Two Piece is a very very good player, so I'm excited to see what they can do against G two. Yeah, especially for a time for a team like Shopify Rebellion, this format is perfect because yeah. you're not gonna have a situation where you're going to drop a game or two series even, 
and just be out of it. You know, you can't just regain for the next series. Yep. And there's nothing lost except for a couple of points. We've also um, got the yeah. Dig versus RMC. Oh. And that is, uh, that is round two of day one. Uh, so the Dignitas roster flits. He had some high praise about them. You know, he, he was a fan of uh, this combination of Evo, Arsenal, and Zanil. And then you've got, of course, man. RMC, which is Rattles RMC, Magic Cheese. RMC, Rattles Magic Cheese. <laughs> is there a worse name in Rocket League at the I, moment? Look, I, I, I understand your dis, you know, disdain for the lack of creativity. <laughs> right? But, I mean, RMC is not that bad. Yeah, RMC is okay, I guess. But, but yeah, you, what, what magic would you keys. what would you have gone with as a name? I'm putting uh, on the spot here. The, well, the peeps was already taken. Right. Um, uh, can bring back birds, I guess. That's that's left birds? open. Yeah, there was a team called birds. They actually played each other. Oh, that's right. Pe birds, peeps yeah, and, birds and birds played bees. each other. They had to change their name. I remember now. Yeah. That was that was uh, interesting, but I don't think any of the players were right. from that team. But if mm. you know, if you could bring that back, that would be fun. Oh, I'll tell you what. If uh, <clears throat> if somebody's got a, a name that they think would be good, drop it here in the chat. Y'all drop it down in the comments below on YouTube. What would you call the team of Reddles, Magic, and Cheese? I feel like there's something there with cheese and magic. There has to be. There has like, to. Like there's got to be something good, right? Yeah, I mean. At least we have another matchup to look forward to, which mm -hmm. is Space Station versus OG. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's just a banger because those teams have been on the same kind of level, yep. in the same kind of RLCS points range. They have been battling it out. All the, even if they're not playing against each other, they're playing for the same positions. Yeah, yeah. So it, to see them go up against each other in the Shift Summer League twice, might mm. I remind you, just once uh, this this week already. I mean, that's that's uh, amazing. Which round is that? That is on 9 p.m. EDT. Uh, that is, uh, I'm looking at EU. There we go. Yeah, that is um, Space Station OG. Oh, and we have Rattles Magic Cheese versus Genji. That mm. is a pretty good, pretty good round. We got some bangers. Gonna have, to, gonna have to get two monitors for that one. That's all on, on the first match day as well. So there's all oh, this. We've only been talking about a Tuesday. Yeah, just day that's one. A, that's one day out of the <laughs> six match days that we have across three weeks before the playoffs even start, right? Because you get the top six out of yeah. this league play will qualify for the playoffs bracket where the prize money is to be made. And that's in the first week of August. So the fourth week of this tournament from here. Mm. Exciting stuff, man. Y'all y'all, y'all really need to be tuned in for SSL um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. As Yen said, uh, we start at 7 CEST for the European broadcast, and then we start at 7 EDT for the NA broadcast, um, both on Tuesday and Wednesday. So make sure you're tapped in to shift RLE. And it's a little bit late, to be fair, for, for European viewers. But, sure. uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm okay with the NA viewers for once, you know, having a tournament at a favorable time and at a prime time where they can actually watch it in their evening instead of having to, you know, right. maybe watch it at, at work, work or, or in something. school or something yeah. Yeah. on their phone because it starts at noon or something. But now mm -hmm. it actually starts at seven, which is one a.m. here in Europe. So it's gonna be crazy nice I mean, for hey, me. Look, if you're if you're on the gamer schedule, one a.m. is the middle of the day for for some people. Yeah. So yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a lot to organize. And then the final oh, yeah, day of the yeah, event, final day of playoffs is the 7th of August, which of course for me will run into the 8th of August, which is my birthday. So I get to celebrate my birthday <laughs> with the winners of the NA Shift oh, yeah. Summer League. Isn't that amazing? A little bit of work on your birthday. Don't you love it? That's ah, a great. Um, well, that is, I mean, that's our marquee matchups. And that's not, look, we, we said week one, but that's just day one. Okay, that's just Tuesday. We've got all kinds of action coming uh, both Tuesday and Wednesday, so y'all be sure to stay tuned in. The Liquipedia page is up. It will be updated. Uh, we've also got the uh, prediction sheet. You know, everybody is probably familiar with Adam Core publishing those. He has stepped away from making them. Someone else has stepped up to the plate. His name is Cody. You can uh, check him on Twitter. I've actually hit it with a retweet if you, if you guys follow my account. Um, but you can um, make your predictions throughout the entire league play, all right? 
you've got your sheet, check that out. Um, I'm certainly going to be making my predictions on uh, on stream, so I'm excited for that. Um, now, off-season roundup. Let's talk about what has happened over the past week or so, um, and let's just kick it off with a big one. Squishy, obviously, no longer with Rule 1 as they have closed the doors and shut down the operation. Cloud9 no longer has their team. They drop the duo of Lion Blaze and uh, Percy. And the two reunite. Squishy is back with right. Cloud9 as a content creator and co-owner. Squishy Muffins, co-owner of Cloud9. What do we make of that? I mean, it's great to see for Rocket League in general. Because it's not the biggest esport out there, right? Especially not outside of France. Um, but it, it it says something that an organization like Cloud Nine, you know, wants to work together with a Rocket League figurehead like Squishy Muffins, and and actually, you know, try to make things work. Because it's not just the ownership; it's not just the content creation. Uh, in a comment on Reddit, Cloud Nine also uh, said that. Squishy will be involved or is involved actually already with picking the new Cloud9 Rocket League roster for for the next season. I I suppose wow. I don't think they're gonna pick up a team anytime really soon. That doesn't really make sense to me. But weirder things have happened in esports. Yeah. Um, so when that will happen, I have no idea. I have no links to share there as well. But. Uh, you know, that Squishy gets a role in, in helping them create a new team or, or picking up a, a roster, that's that's lovely to see as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially because he is still a high-level player. You know, he'll be running into those guys in ranked, and he's got plenty of you know, connections yeah, with all the players to know who's active and, and who's doing well and who's on the grind and who's hungry. So I think that is going to be um, very helpful for Cloud9. I think that kind of sentiment where you have someone that is heavily integrated into the competitive space consult uh, with your top brass about what players and what teams may actually be an attractive um, selection for you. I think that is a great idea. And I think a few orgs in the past may would have benefited from taking those extra steps before snagging, you know, maybe a big name that uh, didn't ended up panning out. So Oh, you're talking about Turbopol, so on Dark Zero. I did not say any names. Oh, or okay, any teams. it is. Oh, well, then I did. <laughs> you instead. But uh, what I don't, I don't know anything about the co-ownership. Of course, like, sure. I don't know what to make of that because we don't know how big right. of a stake like that ownership actually is, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it's cool that it happens. It is it's cool, cool that yeah. there's there's some collaboration at, at the very least. Um, and I mean, it's clear that the organization has always been very close to Squishy's heart because yeah. it's, it's, it's his organization. I mean, they're linked forever. Mm -hmm. So now they are also contractually linked. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, what it actually entails in terms of the business for, for the organization or for yeah. himself. I mean, after his career so far, I'm not saying it's over, as a content creator, as a player, there's some money going around there. So oh, yeah. It, it helps to have someone like him uh, on your side, not exactly as an investor, but as someone who you know can deal with with some of these you know ownership stakes mm -hmm. and, and trying to invest in in the business as a whole, not just like pouring in money. But yeah, it, it's it's a. Uh, I think it's I only think it's, positive, but I think it's very cool that Rocket League esports was so iconic and pivotal in that org's history. Yeah. That you know that moment and that team and that signing meant so much to the org and so much history and legacy there that and, and of course the world championship win that now it's come full circle and and he's back um, you know on the staff side as well. I think yeah. that is super cool for um, their org, but also for Rocket League esports. Yeah, and I, I feel like organizations really recognize the power of having a a, a big name as a yeah. content creator on yeah. your side. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, of course, you have the French organizations that we kept talking about, and plus Moist Esports, which have the content creator as an owner, which is a very special case. But if you don't have that, like Cloud9, I mean, I guess, uh, what's his name? Etienne from, uh, from Cloud9, the owner, is, is a pretty well known figure, but he's not a content creator or anything. 
Yeah. Um, and you had Cloud9 has had content creators like this in the past. Jack, that's it. Jack Etchen. Etchen is his last name. Um, you've you've had content creators like this on Cloud9 before, like Tens from Valorant. Uh, well, from Counter Strike and then into Valorant. And he was basically benched on his team for a while. He was good enough to play, and he is playing again. Uh, but he couldn't find a team, or he, his contract couldn't get bought out. So he was just grinding the content creation on Cloud9. So they know what, it, what it's like to have a content creator that size uh, on your team. Yeah. And I mean, right now it's Tarek who won the Counter-Strike Major with Cloud9, actually. It all comes back to Cloud9. They're just one of the, the staple North American organizations. Yeah and have been for years. He is now a content creator for Sentinels, mm -hmm. and his his watch party of the Valorant esports streams is literally like twice as large sometimes as yeah. the official stream. Yeah. It's insane. This is about 200K viewers just on the co-stream. Yeah. So these organizations know what it's like to have a content creator on your side. And I mean, Cloud9 in particular is a great fit for mm -hmm. someone like Squishy. Yep, absolutely. That's not not all that happened this past week. We also had the announcement of um, what used to be known as Gamers 8 is now rebranded as EWC or Esports World Cup. We're just going to call it EWC. Um, they announced some community tournaments, and we had one happen in SAM over this past weekend. Uh, there was a couple, a couple groups. So they had a group stage into the playoff bracket. Um, you know, you had Ninjas in Pajamas, Loud, Team Secret and Furia, those were your, your top four. Um, a couple of good semifinal matches. Furia took down Ninjas in Pajamas 4-2. Uh, to two. Team Secret took down Loud 4-3. to three. And then Furia ended up winning the event 4-1. Uh, so you've got that occurring. There's a, a, a Mina uh, this coming weekend, EWC Community Cup. And then I think the next two weekends are North America and Europe. So you've got some more events happening. And if I might add... You might. There was a Hootie Hoo 2v2 tournament this was past there? weekend. There sure Whoa. was. We had an NA 2v2 event. Uh, big shout out to Thrustmaster eSwap Pro Controllers for, for uh, sponsoring the channel and, and making that stuff possible. But we had a tournament this past weekend. Chronic and First Killer participated, and they swept the entire thing. I mean, they just... <laughs> It just wasn't that, that is a hell of a team. <laughs> they were disgusting, man. We got to the grand finals, and First Killer was seriously just... Bro, he was in free play. I mean, he yeah, was just yeah. unreal, dude. He was so, so... I mean, it's 2v2. You get so much more time yeah. on the ball. And yeah. then a player like First Killer, I mean, they're all these players are grinding twos yeah. all the time. That's all they do in ranked. So when you actually give them a good teammate and a good competitive you know, environment to actually yeah. play in, yeah, it is just free play for them. Yeah. They can do it with their eyes closed. So we had that. And then next weekend, as I said, uh, the you've got the MENA Community Cup, but I've also got a second 2v2 tournament I'm going to be running on the EU servers. Ooh. We've got um, some exciting teams signed up. I'll give you one. Drolly is playing with Daniel. Uh, Daniel over we, on EU ping. He, no, he's going to be he's gonna be playing high ping. Um, that was the first question I asked. I didn't know if they were boot camping or something was going on, but he's going to be at home playing high ping, but we'll have the, the duo of Drolly Daniel playing. I've got wow. most of our teams um, figured out. I got to lock in two or three more, and then I'll, I'll announce those teams as well. But um, I'm excited to do these. Uh, I, I hope that you know the folks that get to watch. I hope they enjoy them because uh, just like Shift Summer League or this EWC Community Cup, ultimately all we're looking to do is provide some good content, high level gameplay for uh, for the folks to watch in the downtime. Yeah, and then we have kind of last minutes as a roster move coming in, uh, and I mean Nubo coming in for Twisted Minds. Yeah. Even though this player is still playing the world championships with anything. Yeah. X for one. Yep. And, and I want to do this too, because someone asked this in my Discord when they saw that. Does that mean that Nupo can't play the world championship? The answer is no. RLCS doesn't really consider what a player is signed to. They don't really, RLCS rules doesn't care about your organization. They care about the three players that played in the second split are going to be the three players playing at Worlds. So yep. uh, new players have the spots. And his two teammates are going to be playing. And since anything is not a, um, it's not an organization, it's just a team name, there's not any conflict whatsoever. So, you know, he won't be, you know, it's not going to be Twisted Minds Nupo 
it will be anything Nupo, but yeah, he will get to play the world championship. And then from there forward, he will be rocking with his, his new roster on Twisted Minds. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting development getting picked up so quickly after yeah. basically getting dropped and taking the entire organization down with him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the things happen differently around the world. Um, from Twisted Minds to picking up like right now is maybe a little bit of a weird move. On the other hand, uh, Saudi Arabia has their own competitions going on quite regularly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the next uh, Saudi E-League or equivalent of that is that is coming up. Uh, but I can imagine that they just wanted to get him. If they were planning to sign him anyway, they might as well snatch right. him up before someone else does. Yep. Uh, so yeah, there is... Uh, oh yeah, the Saudi E-League Major 3 is at the start of August. So that, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then they're also going to compete in the AWC uh, MENA Community Cup. So yeah. there you go. And I have to issue an apology to the region of Oceania. Because okay. last week, we did not cover this one, which is that Finn retired oh. from Rocket League. That yeah. is Finn, not the Finn that works as a statistician and, uh, and writer on Shift Early .gg, although this Finn did indeed write the retirement article for Shift Early .gg about yeah. Finn retiring. He was also the one interviewing Finn at London Major, which was a lovely event. Really? Um, but I mean, he was just in time with that interview because it's he's done now. He's done. He's just 21 years old. Um, but, uh, you know, some people just uh, have other things going on in their life. And uh, absolutely, that's very fair. All right. So well, there there's go. a there's a quick roundup of the recent events over the last week or so. We'll try to do that some more throughout the offseason just to keep you guys up to date with everything that's going on. Um, let's get our final segment underway. Speed taking. Which I've also got a comment in my Discord about how we are not very fast. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to rebrand this. All right. I'll throw it's you the first one. We've got, we've got our first take from Ethan. This is or was the most competitive RL season, RLCS season of all time. The most competitive. How would you define competitive? Because it's... I would say... I would say, if it, if it were me interpreting the question, I would say, like, most parity. Mm. But that would mean... Obviously, that you... obviously, every season, players are going to be better than, this, than the season before, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you're if you're talking about just like how good are the players, then obviously it's this season. But yeah, that, exactly. that can't be the question because everyone knows that. Um I think this is more about yeah, like like you said, parity. Mm -hmm. And then I mean we've we see G two getting to every single grand finals they can make. And KC sweeping KC sweeping the first half of the season in Europe. There there we go. So in terms of competitiveness in that kind of case. Maybe not. What does what does speak in favor of this is that we have more of the other regions getting involved yeah, at the majors, right? right? Yep. So that that's a big part, of course, where more than just Europe and North America can actually compete on the world stage. Yeah. Is this the most competitive RCS season? I think we've seen more competitiveness in terms of yeah. teams just constantly beating each other. Uh, you, I mean, you think too, like OCE was strictly power. Mina was strictly Falcons. Yeah, yeah. So, there, there have been a couple of one team regions as well. Uh, but then you have South America, which kind of helps helps mm -hmm. out the, the rest. But no, I, I don't think it's the most competitive for RCS season. No. Not for me. Okay. Udi. Yep. From, I think this is from Reddit actually, isn't it? It sure is instead of from the shift court where most of these stakes are from. You can find the, the link in, the, in any description. Um, Anon141118 says, if you got to put one extra 100 boost pad anywhere on the map, where would you put it? I know, I know the answer. <laughs> the answer is, it is obvious? where? In the middle of the ceiling. 
right in the middle, above the ball yeah. that's kickoff. So is it is it would it mirror? Do you know what I'm saying? Hmm. So can you put two boost pads? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure, sure. Because right now I'm torn, be... I'm torn either one inside of the net. Okay. Or on the backboard above it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say inside the net. Mm. Which would it would be two boost pads, but one for each team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one in each goal. Yep. Yeah. Which is but gonna make they're... scoring so difficult. Yeah. Because yeah. now you can rotate straight back to net. Yeah. You don't need to I mean, swing people out to already the side. rotate through the net, right? I mean, yeah. I do it constantly. Absolutely. Keeps your momentum up if you just go off the ceiling back into the field. Yeah. The the ceiling, I think, sounds more fun, but there are yeah. not as many there are a couple occasions where they can make use of it. Specifically, yeah, you think of like a, an air dribble where they go yeah. up there, like Alpha makes use of it, Zen makes use of it. I think that's it. the point. Like you have enough boost on the field already. I don't feel like that we're lacking boost in competitive Rocket League. So that's why I would put it on the ceiling. Because then you'd actually only get it for specific plays right. where people actually well, go. Well, that's true, because I'm well, I'm thinking about things through the sense of like, how do we play now and how would it be used? But that's not yeah. like if you place one there, it would shift things. Players would begin to use that specific uh specific area more, you know. Ceiling is more fun, but I'm gonna stick with my answer. I'm gonna say inside yeah. the net. Okay, inside the net it is. All right, let me throw you one. Uh, take C from Ortogonal. Ortogonal. I'm so I sorry. Know. I know that I'm saying your name wrong. I apologize. I know they're a regular in the shift Discord. I see them around, but uh, well, send them my condolences. Um, I butchered their name. <laughs> or uh, let me uh, let me lean into my Arkansan. You ready? There we go. Ortogonal. Oh yeah. Oh, oh Ortogonal. Um, all right, Flitz deserves to be on a top eight team in North America. We kicked him out. You can be honest. <laughs> on the top eight team. Um, ooh, top eight. You know, he's not far off. I think that's that's. it's a very good take. I don't think so at the moment, yeah. but maybe my view will have shifted completely. Uh, shift. Ooh, I see what you did. After the Shift Summer League. I think this is a moment for players like Flitz to prove yeah, themselves. Yeah, agreed. But I think if the, if, if the take was like 12 to 14. Right. That is the area the where, where yeah. like, just outside of top eight, like top, mm, like around the 10th mark mm. is where I think he fits right now. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't have to stay like that. That's right. Maybe I just haven't seen enough of him yet. Like we haven't out of Wonder Mike for a while. Right, right. All right. So not yet, but maybe not soon. Yet. From Colt Hoodie, mm -hmm. the 2024 World Championship will not break the all-time RLCS viewership record. Correct. Ooh. And my reason for believing so is it's so far away. Mm. It's so far away. I think there is going to be obviously, obviously all the hardcore fans we're we're tuned in. Like we're not going to miss it. Right. But I think there's going to be a lot of people that are not. Ju they're just not informed. You know, I had yeah. this huge rant on my stream today. Um, I had this huge rant on my stream today about this, and there is so much. And it doesn't matter where you you, you know when we had trading, you had to rely on third parties. The Rocket League esports has to rely on Liquipedia. Um, training packs. How, where do you find a training pack? You have to rely on a YouTube or a, some other, like you, we rely so much on third party systems to give us information, to connect us, to do whatever. And I really am so annoyed by the fact that we make it a point to use that main menu landing page to advertise decals and bundles and sales for items and cosmetics, but we don't make use of it for the esport. And I don't know why. I don't know why. It's a billboard. And there, listen, the, the vast majority of the player base is console. I know that we got plenty of Epic players now, but there's a lot of Xbox and PlayStation players. And a lot of times they're just not going to see the info. They're just yeah, going to miss yeah, it. Yeah. If you will blast yeah. it right in front of their face, talk about the recent RLCS champion. 
show the upcoming events. I don't know why there's not an itinerary or, or, or some page there that you could look at eSports info. I think that would help. Right now, we've got our Live Now button, and that is the absolute bare minimum, in my opinion. But yeah, I, I yeah. think it's so, it's so far removed from the RLCS season that a lot of people are just not going to know what's happening. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, it's hard to gauge for hardcore fans like us that yeah. have that follow it on all these third-party pl yeah. uh, platforms. Because I heard from someone who has who wasn't that familiar with Shift to begin with, so hasn't been following it from our side, mm -hmm. uh, but does watch a lot of Rocket League esports. That this guy heard about Shift Summer League on TikTok. Like <laughs> Shift is not hey. active on t TikTok, so someone right. must have been talking about it, which is yeah, cool. That is cool. But it, it does mean it comes from kind of random places. Yep. So Absolutely. yeah, yeah, you, you, you're sadly probably right. Uh, all right, we've got another take here from Deej. What's up, Deej? Simas uh, or Crispy will make a land from NA this season. Those are two, for anyone that doesn't know, those are two European players that are moving over for a CRL opportunity and obviously going to continue to pursue RLCS endeavors as well. Yeah, so they've already, as far as I know, they have already locked in their CRL opportunity, right? Yep, yep. They're going to a school that they're going to be playing Collegiate Rocket League at. Uh, I see Volleyball in, in chat on Twitch. Shout out Volleyball for the CRL gang indeed. But they're also looking for opportunities to play mm -hmm. in the RLCS in North America, but they haven't locked anything in as far as I know. Yep. This is, of course, heavily reliant on the team. Sure. But basically, the question, of course, is are they the caliber of player that are going to be competing for lands or making it to, to lands from NA? So in one of those four spots, if, if the you know if, if the rules all stay the same. Yeah. And the format doesn't change. Um I think if if that's if that's the take, you're underrating North America. I have higher. <laughs> wow! Everybody soak this moment in. Whoa! <laughs> I, I have higher, you know, higher views, higher hopes of the North American teams at the top to say that Simmons or Crispy will make a LAN from a top four position in NA just like that. Yeah. You know, there's too much talent, and there's so much upcoming talent as well, mm -hmm. right? That's something we've been talking about so much, but it, it remains true that Simmons and Crispy are going to have to compete with so many upcoming players yeah. that already have these, you know, NA experience. Simmons and Crispy have a lot of EU experience, which is not any lesser, but they're going to be thrown into the deep a little bit. So I don't expect them to just make lands like that. No. Yeah. All right. And the last take from Walker. Rocket League Twitter is horrible. Preach it, Walker. Rocket <laughs> League Twitter is garbage. Look, I know a lot of people don't like this, and I don't know why they get worked up about it, but I would not be surprised if I have 50% of the Rocket League community blocked or muted. It's just so much nonsense, dude. It's so much trash. It's so much garbage. We've got all kinds of toxic takes here and there. People very much use the fact that they can create an anonymous account where they'll never face consequences and they will guys listen that world championship where there was the issue between uh space station Reddles, arsenal daniel arsenal's mother was receiving death threats in dms that is not okay yeah that happens that is insane and you know that is the stuff that they're 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 doing behind closed doors but i see a bunch of trash straight on the timeline as well so no it's terrible it's terrible yeah i, I mean miss, you're, you're I miss, talking i miss crimsic oh yeah i miss him too oh yeah <laughs> he was so good at creating with, all these reaction images as well know, that you could it, use for everything dog with hat gang those oh. days that, that was, was that was some that was some pretty good Rocket League Twitter. No. Now it's just so it's just it's just a toxic. I mean, it, it was fun for like two weeks, but if if I see, see someone with a dog dog with hat profile picture in 2024, and yes, I'm <laughs> calling you out. 
I mean, oh, I'm, I'm not going to take you seriously. I'm sorry. Yeah. But yeah, there's yeah, people I mean, here. There's you're people talking here more from the that... perspective of Rocket League Twitter as a whole, which is fair because that is kind of the take. Rocket League Twitter is horrible. But when I'm seeing that take, I'm thinking about like the, could you call them content creators? The, the, the Twitter personalities of the mains. The Twitter mains. Yeah. That's what they're doing. I mean, it's well, not always for me, but this, this, I wouldn't call it horrible. My personal opinion is that when, when things got monetized, um, you know, people are no longer, it doesn't feel genuine. You know, people are just banger mm. hunting and they're just want the, the, anything for the impression. And I know they're not, you know, probably not being paid out uh, very healthily either. But I feel like uh, I feel like you know, Twitter a few years ago was much more enjoyable than Twitter is now. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and that, like uh, Unibrow Shaver in chat just uh, says as well, yeah. like as a platform, Rocket yeah. League doesn't have anything to do with that. No, it's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, it is what I'm it sorry. is. Sorry, my take stands. <laughs> garbage <laughs> garbage <laughs> well that's it right. folks uh shift cast episode 24 in the books man i really appreciate everyone tuning in to the lives these are always fun uh we'll probably eventually maybe work in some segments where we can get some live questions from you guys uh anyone that's catching cool. the vod on youtube again we'll plug it one more time twitch.tv forward slash shift r l e tune in if not for shift cast you better be tuned in for Shift Summer League. We've got some banger content coming up Tuesday and Wednesday, the next uh, three weeks, and then we're going to roll into playoffs. So, Which starts as we are live tomorrow. And mm. also with the Shift cast, we're trying to up the content when it oh, yeah. comes to Shift Summer League, trying to get as many guests on that are related, like players, maybe even the MVPs of the weeks. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting month, I would say. A very exciting month for sure. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. We appreciate that. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the day. Be sure to uh, follow, subscribe on YouTube, rate on Spotify, whatever it is. Thank you guys for catching in or checking in, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.